Cottontail rabbits are found throughout most of Nebraska. The eastern cottontail lives throughout the state, while the desert cottontail lives only in western Nebraska. In rural areas, cottontails spend their entire lives on a few acres. They flourish in much of Nebraska and can multiply very quickly under suitable conditions, good weather, good habitat, or lack of predators. Cottontails are prey for coyotes, bobcats, foxes, and hawks. Rabbits have large incisors, similar to those found in squirrels, rats, and mice. These teeth, along with a rabbit's tendency to gnaw, make people mistakenly believe that rabbits are rodents. They are not. They are classified as lagomorphs because they have two pairs of upper and lower incisors, one behind the other. Rodents only have one pair of upper and lower incisors. Cottontails breed from February through August. Females, called does, can bear two to six litters a year because they can breed immediately after giving birth. Cottontail nests, called forms, are shallow, cup-shaped depressions lined with fur. The mother places fur over the young for protection. The nests are well hidden, even in closely mowed turf. Cottontails seek shelter under piles of brush, in dense shrubs, under buildings, and in holes. When they feel threatened, they freeze, trying not to be spotted. If the threat comes too close, they run quickly with large bounds to gain distance and zigzag to escape. Cottontails can cause damage any time of the year. During spring, they prefer young growing vegetation like tulips, garden vegetables, clover, and turf grass. In winter, they gnaw through the tender bark of young trees and shrubs to eat the inner green bark. Rabbits are active year-round, day or night, during the summer and during the warmer periods of winter days. Tracks made by rabbits show very long hind feet when compared with front feet. The back feet are placed as pairs ahead of the slightly staggered front feet. Tracks of tree squirrels look similar but are smaller and not staggered. Rabbit droppings are pea-sized individual pellets. Gnaw marks of rabbits occur on the trunks of trees and shrubs a few inches above ground and occasionally on exposed roots. Rabbits occasionally will eat young bark on trees and stems higher than three feet if snow is deep. Rabbits will nip pencil-sized stems cleanly at a 45-degree angle, while deer leave a jagged, torn edge on stems of this size or larger. Just because you have rabbits doesn't mean that there will be economic damage to plants. Most two- to three-foot-high shrubs can survive having most of the one- and two-year-old twigs removed. However, this may reduce the number of flowers or fruits. The key to effective and economical rabbit control is to reduce or prevent damage using a number of methods. The methods used will depend on the value of what you wish to protect and how much you are willing to spend for protection. One method of preventing damage is exclusion. A one-inch mesh fence of poultry netting works well to protect gardens and perennial flower beds from rabbit damage. Bury the bottom edge of the fence about four inches below ground to prevent rabbits from digging under it. The buried portions should be flared outward from the protected area to offer more protection against digging. A two-foot high fence will offer protection against cottontail rabbits. A taller fence may be necessary if winter brings much snow cover. A two-foot high fence of poultry netting with four-foot, three-eighth inch fiberglass rods can protect a 25 by 50 foot garden space for about $1.13 per linear foot at 2010 prices. You can extend the life of a fence by removing it each fall and storing it for winter. Plastic poultry netting is available, but is more expensive than wire and can be damaged by gnawing animals. If you want to exclude rabbits from your entire backyard, you can use welded wire of 1 by 2 inch mesh or 1 inch mesh hardware cloth. Chain link fences will not exclude rabbits. You can fortify an existing fence by adding hardware cloth to the bottom of the fence. To protect individual trees, use cylinders of black plastic drain tile cut to length and slit down one side, then place around the trunk. Other types of exclusion devices are described in the NEB guide. Another way to help reduce rabbit damage is to modify the habitat and avoid growing plants in your landscape that rabbits prefer. Remove brush piles and tall weeds. Mow or spray to remove vegetation within three to four feet of newly planted trees and shrubs. They may need protection for as long as 10 years before they are mature enough to discourage rabbit feeding. Rabbits seem to prefer plants in the lily family, along with asters, hostas, impatiens, pansies, phlox, and tulips. Young trees and shrubs with thin bark are especially attractive to rabbits. Daffodils are poisonous to rabbits, so they may be planted as alternatives to tulips. Rabbits tend to avoid plants with strong aromas or dense pubescence. 
Some trees that rarely suffer damage from rabbits include black walnut, junipers, spruces, and firs. Frightening devices such as scarecrows, fake owls, or snakes, spinning aluminum pie pans, and glass jars of water have been used to frighten rabbits. Dogs confined by fences, tethers, or long leashes may help frighten rabbits as well. Protection often is short-lived because rabbits get used to frightening devices. Most rabbit repellents aren't registered for use on plants meant for human food. Repellents typically work through taste or odor. Taste repellents are applied directly to the plant to make the plant less palatable. Capsaicin, or hot pepper, is a common ingredient. Effectiveness is short-lived, and the repellent must be reapplied after irrigation, rain, or new growth. Odor repellents keep rabbits away by fear or foul smell. Predator urine, garlic, and eggs are some of the ingredients in odor repellents. They usually are applied directly to the plant foliage. Always follow label directions for use of any repellent. Any repellent's value can be reduced by wind, water, plant growth, and animal pressure. Trapping or shooting can reduce local rabbit populations temporarily. Trapping takes more time and removes fewer animals than shooting. Translocation of rabbits beyond 100 yards is illegal in Nebraska. Municipalities may further restrict the use of traps within city limits, so consult local law enforcement prior to trapping. Skunks can be captured in these traps as well, so consult the Internet Center for Wildlife Damage Management for information on handling captured skunks before you begin trapping. Cottontails can be hunted in Nebraska. Consult the Nebraska Game and Parks Commission for more information. When rabbits threaten agriculture, the Game and Parks Commission may grant permission to cage trap and or shoot rabbits outside of the hunting season, but only if other methods such as exclusion have been tried and failed. Consult local ordinances as well as the Nebraska Game and Parks Commission before trapping or shooting rabbits. A variety of approaches such as rabbit-proof fences, vigilant dogs, motion-activated water sprays, tree guards, and chemical repellents may provide the best chances for control. I'm Scott Hingstrom with the University of Nebraska-Lincoln Extension.